Well, thank you very much, Dara and Mary, for inviting us to participate today. Um, as uh, Mary said, I'm the coordinator of the Idaho Caregiver Alliance, and um, I will spend, I will talk as fast as I can to move you through this information and get a lot out to you uh, today. Next. Uh, this has got a lot of stuff in this slide, but I wanted to share it because it has both our vision, our mission, and our values. We are a statewide coalition of something like 1,500 members around the state. We um, don't, we're not members in, in the dues paying sense. If you want to sign up, you're considered a member, it's free, and we would love to have you join us on one of our quarterly meetings. Um, but this kind of tells you who we are. We're funded by um, the Commission on Aging. We are Idaho's Lifespan um, Respite Coalition. Um, the Commission on Aging has a Lifespan Respite Grant and they're required to have uh, a Lifespan um, Coalition. And that is us. Um, we provide a voice for the some 300,000 unpaid family caregivers in Idaho. And consider those family members to kind of be the backbone of Idaho's long-term care system. <clears throat> so here's how you can see us um, on the web and on social media. We are um, always working on issues of concern to family caregivers from um, encouraging a, a caregiver-friendly workplace to um, ensuring more uh, access to respite care and um, we are not a provider organization. We are we bring people together to um, to get things done on behalf of caregivers. Next, this just lets you know who our partners are. We we are we are partners. We are we would be nothing working alone. And you can see from the little kind of modified Venn diagram that the caregiver is in the middle of all that we do. And here are some of our alliance partners. By no means. So it's public organizations, private associations, nonprofits, Molina, Blue Cross, AARP. We're Lifespan, so you can see that Idaho Parents Unlimited is also one of our partners. Next. This is uh, a key slide in terms of giving you an idea about our resources. We have a website for the Alliance and a website for the Navigator Project that are constantly being updated. We have a very robust resource library that is searchable by topic. Um, we have a monthly uh, email newsletter that goes out uh, sometime around the middle to the later part of each month with all sorts of information, including information about LEARN. Um, and so one of those, I think our January one will be kind of a end of year report for everyone. And then during the legislative session, we have weekly legislative updates by our legislative intern. And that is delivered um, in partnership with the Idaho Public Health Association. When you, when you have access to this, if you want to click on that, subscribe to our updates. If you're not on our mailing list, that will put you on our mailing list. And we try to be, we try to not bury you in emails, but make sure you have what you need to, um, to stay informed on caregiver issues. Next. And here's the conference that uh, Dara uh, commented on. The theme this year is hashtag caregiver and, which is the theme for National Cam Family Caregiver Month in November. And we're carrying it forward into our um, conference. It's Saturday, February 26th from 8.30 to 5. Please join us. Um, you'll find a lot of information there in addition to some of the um, the event platform allows um, the kinds of vendor rooms that Dara was talking about. And um, there will be four tracks. There's some plenary presentations. And we're so excited that our opening remarks are going to be offered by Dr. Marlene Trump, president of Boise State University, who's also a caregiver for her mother. So if, and the theme this year is kind of embracing your identity beyond being a family caregiver. So you can't, find anybody who's any busier and more visible than Dr. Trump in terms of wearing those, those hats. Um, and I have sent supplemental information to Dara and Mary about how to, um, 
how to register for that conference and registration is currently open next that information will all be posted on the members only website um, along with the recording for anybody who missed uh, today's meeting. So hopefully all of our members will have access to it, Marilyn. Thank you, Dara. Marilyn, yeah. can I just interject for one sure. second too? Because I, I don't think this was mentioned. So it is a virtual conference. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, so, it is. Yeah, using mm -hmm. um, the Zoom event um, platform. So I just, I, I, I want to mention that because I don't, I, I think we just automatically assume that things are virtual now. Yeah, so that, you're absolutely right, Mary. Thank you very much. So what, last year we had about 300 attendees and we're hoping to have more than that this year and i did want to mention i forgot one thing too mary that for the first time we're having a, a track for spanish speakers everything is in spanish and um yvette primero who's going to be presenting to you is going to be one of the presenters of the workshop in the spanish track so uh if you know of any spanish-speaking families that could benefit from that information please share this with them. For them, the register, there is no cost for registration, simply because we recognize there's a lot of hurdles that they're jumping through to get uh, connected with the supports they need, and we don't want registration to be a hurdle for them. Uh, currently, the Idaho Caregiver Alliance is kind of the entity that, along with the Boise State Center for the Study Boise State University Center for the Study of Aging, of the Family Caregiver Navigator Project. This project is currently uh, being offered in Southwest Idaho in conjunction with the Area Agency on Aging. We're about to take it uh, to Southeast Idaho to Pocatello. And also we're working with the Commission on Aging and Adult Protective Services to offer this as an intervention, early intervention for um, folks in the adult protectives that manifest through the adult protective system. It's a free service. It provides, it's for caregivers across the lifespan. If you're 18 or older and you're caring for anybody of any age, this is for you. And it's an options counseling and referral service. I have to give a shout out to Mary, who's our, Mary Holden, who's our um, intake navigator. She's the one who kind of put funnels people through the door and out to a navigator that will then provide um, an assessment and then a plan. What's, why don't we skip to the next slide and it gives you kind of a graphic of the, of the flow of this intervention. You can, people can be referred by one of you or they can refer themselves or it could be one of you. And um, you can go online and complete a quick screener or you can call the number that's on the website, 208-426-5899, and that will put you in touch with uh, Mary, and then a navigator will reach back out to the person. They will go through an, a kind of an interview-based assessment, takes about 45 minutes. We use a uh, evidence-based platform called T-Care, uh, that will take that information, put it through uh, an algorithm, and then reveal something like two to five goals that the caregiver can use in a care plan for them. Not so much the person they're caring for, but for the caregiver. And then the navigator works with that person to identify resources that can help those people meet those goals. And there's, it's always a warm handoff to an individual that can help the, the caregiver um, maintain their health, maintain their resilience, maintain their caregiving. And um, I think we're very lucky to have, I think we have about five caregivers and navigators now, Mary, in addition to Mary being our intake navigator. So this is a demonstration project funded by the Money Follows the Person project as part of Medicaid. But people who participate don't have to be on Medicaid. Family doesn't have to be on Medicaid. And um, this really is for anyone who's caregiving. Uh, and it doesn't have to be 24-7. It can be um, if, you, if you're carrying some caregiver burden, this is for you and will help you manage your stress, depression, identity discrepancy, those sorts of things. Um, I'm trying to think of what I've missed. It's free. Um, 
And um, in, this, in about the last six months, we've been doing a lot of outreach into Spanish speaking communities in Southwest Idaho. We uh, have an advisory committee for this project, as well as a Hispanic advisory committee that's guiding our outreach into the Spanish speaking community. So we do have two bilingual navigators. We lost Yvette, she was one of our navigators, but now we have two other um, bilingual navigators. So we can match up um, Spanish speaking um, caregivers that, that contact us and make sure they have um, the resources that they need in the language that's useful to them. Marilyn, do I remember correctly that there is a translation service available for other languages beyond Spanish as well? Yes, Sarah, that's correct. Make sure that our conference is really accessible to anybody with a disability. That's why when I sent conference information to Dara and Mary Malott, it was um, in uh, text only so that people with disabilities can process that information without having to wade through things that are not accessible to them. Okay, what do we have next here, Dara? This focuses on our outreach to the Hispanic community. Um, navigantesidaho.org will take you to the Spanish speaking um, navigator website. And uh, we, we have a lot of hard copy materials marketing the caregiver navigator project. And then we also have um, all of those materials downloadable from either our English or Spanish website. So that's my presentation to you. I'm happy to answer any questions you have.